Welcome to Paint Like Georgia O'Keeffe with Cheryl Cat um, Cathers. Cheryl will lead us through how to paint the giant red poppy, just like O'Keeffe's. Cheryl is an oil painter and a prolific mural painter, including the beautiful exterior mural at the Gilroy Library, where I am. I get to go by it all the time. Cheryl has taught art to all ages for many years. She served as an art director at St. Mary's School for 18 years and opened Dabble Art Center in 2010, where she continues to share her love for art and encourages others to pursue their artistic abilities. Let's welcome Cheryl. Thank you, Marcy. It's such a treat to be here tonight. I'm excited. George O'Keefe has always been one of my favorites. Um, her colors are, are, her shapes are just so exciting to see. So I'm really thrilled to be able to do this. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. I am gonna try and encapsulate it into one hour, which is a challenge, but we can do it. <clears throat> but just remember if you feel like you're falling behind or I'm going a little fast, that it will be recorded. And so you can look at that later and review some areas. And so if you fall behind, it won't matter at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. I would also encourage you if I do give instruction for one area and then they move to another area and you're not ready, just move with me because you can go back and, and finish an area um, later on for the most part. Acrylic paint, I feel, is very forgiving. You can go over it. You can change things. So let's get started. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go quickly through the materials. I do have a finished painting here. This is 9 by 12, and it's on watercolor paper, which supports acrylic paint really well. Take that away. That's the size. And then this is my... Oh, I'm going to put this... So this is my new sheet. If you're on a canvas, great. Really doesn't matter what size you are. I'm about 11, probably about, I, I taped it off. So it's probably closer to 10, um, 10 by 13 or 14. So the dimensions are not gonna matter a whole lot because I'm gonna show you a little magic trick on how to properly draw any image onto some paper. And again, we're gonna simplify it. So I have a pencil, right, for drawing, my big eraser. I don't like erasers on pencils. They usually leave a pink smudge. They make a mess. I don't like them. So I use Magic Rub is really good. This is called a Moo, M-O-O. -O. It's kind of an amazing eraser, but enough about that. Variety of brushes. It's completely up to you. I like a big, round brush. If you see when I flatten that, it's round. So I really like that, but it's a private personal choice. I have two smaller rounds and I have a flat. Again, any brushes that you have, we can make them work. There's, I feel that brushes are very personal and you don't have to spend a lot of money on them. These brushes are a couple bucks each. They're not uh, fancy expensive brushes. Again, I have watercolor paper. I've taped it down on the edges. That really helps. It looks nice when you pull it off, gives you a nice white frame, but it also just keeps your paper from buckling too much. If you're working with watercolor, it's especially important to tape it down. And it's okay today if you're working with something different than acrylic paint. Um, if you have a specific question about that material, just ask. But for the most part, the, the blending and the mixing and the color choices are going to be the same. So for this giant red poppy, I have my acrylic paints. I like to use this brand, Chroma Krill, I buy it at Blick online, blickart.com, B-L-I-C-K. I find that it's very price uh, competitive. And it's just some of the, the less expensive paints that you buy at St. Michael's, the craft paints, they're watery and they don't have a lot of pigment. Uh, they're very see-through. They don't work as well. And your results can show that it's a, not a great a um, uh, great quality of paint. So here I have white next to my blue. I put these in order for me uh, on the color wheel. 
but it's really okay for you to put them in any order. I usually try and use just a throwaway plate because I don't want to wash all of this paint down the sink. It's difficult. It makes a mess. It's better to let these dry. They become inert. You can throw them away. I have white and blue. Any blue, I'm going to mix these to make a really light blue for the background. I have a dark brown. This is raw umber. looks almost black. I have two reds. I have a warm red and a cool red. You can do it with one red. If that's what you have, that's fine. A nice bright orange. This, in my opinion, is the magic color of the day. And it's a, it's a yellow orange, like a sunflower yellow, a bright yellow or lemon yellow. And then this is black. We don't use very much black at all. I might need more paint as I go. That's okay. Just grab more as you go. But once you put acrylic out, it you can't put it back in the tube. So I try not to be too wasteful. All right. And if you haven't set your paints up, you can do that while I do a really brief um, talk about Georgia O'Keeffe. I have a couple paper towels and I have a bucket of water. I'm going to try and keep my palette in the screen so that you can see how I mix colors as I go. And I want to I think that's it on the materials. Let me just talk to you quickly about Georgia O'Keeffe. I'm going to spotlight. I think I can do this. Oh, let's see. First of all, I have to spotlight my, sorry, add spotlight. Okay, there we go. I'm nice and big. All righty, now I'm going to just share some pictures with you so I can talk to you a little bit about Georgia O'Keeffe. I have a few of them, so bear with me while I highlight those. Okay, done, done. Here we go. So Georgia O'Keeffe, very, very important American artist. We don't have a lot of women artists, so we're really excited when we have a genuine master woman American, all of the things that are important. She was born in 1887, and I'm just gonna read a really brief bio about her. Even as a child growing up on a farm in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, Georgia O'Keeffe was aware of nature's wonders and had a strong affection for the land. She spent a lot of time outdoors observing the simplest forms of nature. As she grew older, she began collecting nature specimens to study and draw. As an adult, she turned her observations into paintings that showed the world of nature in a new way, up close and personal. She did um, grow up in Wisconsin and then, sorry, and then she moved to Chicago and she went to art school, which was really remarkable for a woman during that period in the late 1800s, early 1900s. She went to art school in Chicago, was very frustrated with her teachers because they said, paint it this way. And she said, no, 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 I want to paint it the way I see it. So I want to encourage you tonight, even though we are copying one of her works and I'm going to do it in her style, please feel free. You're the artist. Take artistic license. If you want to change the colors, if you want to have a blue flower, if you want to make the center bigger or smaller, that's completely up to you. And I encourage you to do that. Make it your own. Use your own voice. So here she is as a young woman. She did. She was mostly known for her large flowers. She went really close up on these little tiny flowers. She made them gigantic. She also did a lot of landscapes. Um, but she simplified everything. Her, her shapes are very, very simple. And then later on in her life, she really fell in love with New Mexico. And she spent the, the later years of her life in New Mexico, where she painted a lot of these skulls. You'll see those in her work because you find them out when you're hiking. So this is her as a young woman. She married a very important artist, Alfred Stieglitz. He was a photographer. He was quite a bit older than her. So he passed away when she was still quite young. And so she spent the rest of her life as a widow living in New Mexico. But this is one of his photographs of her. He was a very, very famous photograph. He was also a gallery owner in New York and he was the first one to show her work and that's where they met. This is her in her home in Ghost Ranch in New Mexico. There's a beautiful museum there if you ever get a chance to, to visit. And here's our poppy that we're going to be doing tonight. Big, beautiful orange reds. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures really quickly. A landscape. You can see how she is vibrant color. She's not interested in making it look very realistic like a photograph, but instead just showing you the beautiful shapes and colors of nature. And here's a very uh, iconic painting of hers with the landscape and also the skull. Here she is. 
at her ranch. She lived to be 99 years old, really remarkable. So this is my setup tonight and I'm gonna remove the spotlight and we're gonna get started painting, stop, share. There we go, okay. So this should be spotlighted nice and big. If you have to change your screen at all, go ahead and do that. And I used a ruler, there it is. And I cut my, my paper into four equal quadrants. You can do that real quickly. It doesn't have to be exactly measured. And that's my plus sign. And this is how I'm gonna transfer and get the right proportions. You can do this for anything. Here we go. Okay. This is my line drawing that was available. Basic shapes, simple shapes, simplified as much as you can. And this is just a sheet protector, simple sheet protector. I reuse it all the time, so it's pretty smudgy. And I took my black Sharpie and I made the same thing, a plus sign equal quadrants. I did dots. You can do a line. It doesn't matter. And I just always have this available for myself when I am trying to transfer something. And guess what? This is how I do murals because you have a tiny little picture you're looking at, and then you have a gigantic wall. How do you keep the proportions? You do it like this. So I'm going to set this up so that it's somewhat centered. And each quadrant then is much simpler to draw and it doesn't have to match exactly. So I'm just gonna start in my upper quadrant and I can see that there's some shapes there and I, I'm not gonna spend too much time making them detailed. And I'm not gonna even do the dots in the center. Those will all be painted. I'm just looking for a rough idea of where all the shapes come together. So this is pretty close into that line, almost into the center. And I use the center as my starting point. Again, I want it to look like a poppy, but it doesn't have to match. I'm going to have a little bit of background here and here. So this is a V here. I'm going to make it dark so you can see it. That's background. This here, this is background. And those are important little windows of light that are going to come through. This is all flower here. I'm going to go down into my next quadrant. And of course, this goes about halfway down. And I'm not getting my proportions exact. I'm not worried about that. But I'm getting them close enough where it's going to be a pleasant drawing. Okay, see how it goes off? We're going to go right off the bottom there. Up before we hit that. And I just like to take one quadrant at a time. And again, this is background, little window here. And I think. I think there's a little line here, and that's about it. Rough, really rough. Then I'm going to go over really quickly. I know I'm going very fast. Hopefully, a few of you were able to transfer this or draw it before class time. But I did want to show you this little trick. I use it. It's it's very commonly used. It's called the grid method, and it helps a great deal. Okay. There's that. Don't move. Uh, if you're moving this around, of course, it's going to mess everything up. If I'm really worried about doing a face, like worried about the details, then I'll take this down and make sure it doesn't move. But this is a flower. Flowers are forgiving. Bottom. I'm drawing rather dark. You can draw lightly. It's better to draw light, but I'm drawing dark so you can see. Okay. Now. If this were going to be my final painting, I would take the time to erase my grid off so it doesn't get in the way. I'm going to do that really quickly. Hopefully you are taking the time, couldn't find my eraser, to get that drawn out. And we're ready to paint. Okay. There we go. And it's just basic shapes. It's simple areas that are full of color with a couple of little windows of background here and there. All right, here is my paint. Again, I'm using just a paper plate. I don't ever mix water with my acrylic in the beginning. And <laughs> the first layer should be full paint. Looks like it froze a little bit. 
Uh, it shouldn't add any water. If you're working on a canvas, it's especially important. Uh, if you add water, you dilute your paint, you kind of change the chemistry of it. And as it dries, it can crack, it can flake off. And it's, it's just not a good habit to be into. Once we've covered it with paint later on, it's okay to add water to your paint and to thin it down and to make glazes and unwashes. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. All right. I like to start with my lightest colors first. I stay away from black in the beginning. Black is a really, really strong color. I want to just squeeze, to grab my picture over here, <laughs> threw it out of the way. You have something to work with. All righty. There we go. Actually, you have a copy of it somewhere. Okay. I'm going to start with my forward pedal, this one right here. And then I'm going to move to the ones in back. I usually work from the back forward. And I'm only doing this because I want to get some light, bright color on there first. And that's the way I'm choosing to do it. There are many ways to approach your artwork. You don't have to do it exactly in one particular way. Okay, so here's my colors. I'm going to start, I think, with my flat brush. I'm going to see how that goes. Looks like my screen is, hold on one second, later. Something happened to my screen. I don't know what that was. Okay, no water, dry brush, nice and clean. I'm gonna pull some yellow, because that's my brightest color, and I pull it inward, and I work it into the brush, and I'm gonna grab some of this color too. And that's sunflower. <clears throat> okay. It's important when you start to put color on your canvas that you paint in the direction of the growth, like that. You don't wanna paint sideways and all over like that because you create texture and you want your texture to tell the right story. And we can do that a lot better if we're going in the right direction. It's okay to paint back and forth. It's up to you. I'm gonna get a lot darker, but I wanna get this light color on here first. And I'm blending. And you can see that yellow is somewhat a see-through color. It's transparent we're going to add a lot more color to it and it won't be as transparent, but that's why I like to get it on there first. So now I haven't cleaned my brush. I still have two colors on there and I'm gonna pull a little bit of orange in there. And I'm gonna blend that right in. Now everything is wet and so it's gonna blend really nicely. Little light touch. And, uh, you, go. you can reload your brush anytime you need to. And this is certainly not the final color. It's just the beginning of it. Okay. When you're going to change colors, completely change colors, that's when you can wash your brush, but I don't need to do that. Normally, I keep my palette on the table stationary, and it's on my right side because I'm right-handed working from my right. Don't get in the habit of putting it on the opposite side and crossing your artwork with your paint because you will drip. If you're sharing with somebody and you're, you have to do that, of course, you know, if you have to, you have to, that's okay. But it helps if you always set up properly. Okay, now we're gonna go to this back right here. And it's a much bigger area. So, Let's see what colors I'm going to use. I really like this warm red. So I didn't wash my brush because all these colors are going to be on that petal. So I have my red and I have quite a bit of paint on there because I know it's going to take a lot. And I'm just going to start to blend that in. Don't worry if your pencil's showing in the beginning. We're going to cover that with more paint later as we go. And you can use your brush creatively. You don't have to just use it flat. You can use it sideways. However, it gets into the areas that you need it to get into. Okay, I'm gonna pull my red and I'm gonna pull in some of that cool red, which is just a darker red. I'm gonna bring that in there and that's gonna give me a little more um, of a wrinkled, ruffled look because we have some dimension going on there. And again, I'm doing it in the direction of the growth. And again, it's okay to go up, but it's not okay to go sideways. Just 
gently. Now let's talk about edges. When I have a color that stops abruptly like these, that's a hard edge. And we will use hard edges and want, I want you to recognize them. And a soft edge is when you go from one color to another, put some orange in here, but it blends softly. That's called a soft edge. And we're gonna create a lot of soft edges within the artwork. And I'm pressing my brush to really get the paint out. Not stressing too much about the perfect colors just yet. Of course, I don't want green in here. I want them to be red. And I'm coloring it. Now, my, there's no paint on my brush now, but I'm blending. and it's still very wet, so it's okay to do that. Once it starts to dry or get tacky, you don't wanna blend anymore. Like right now, this is rather tacky, so I'm gonna leave it alone. But you can see how I went from dark red over to a lighter orange. See how pretty that is. It looks like the light is coming through. Now I'm gonna clean my brush. When you clean your brush, it's completely up to you. Just feel like you have control of your brush and your materials. If things are getting really messy and you're not feeling like you're in control, clean your brush really well. Dry it on your paper towel. Always dry your brush before you go back in. If your brush is split, giving you trouble in any way, then switch to another brush. This same petal is going to continue. So I'm going to pull in my both reds and a lot of orange. And I'm gonna to start to add that. Painting flowers is really relaxing. It's not a face. It doesn't have any architectural structure like a house with straight, straight lines. You can really have a joyful meditative experience. What I love the most about drawing things and painting things from nature is that it really forces you to take the time and observe. And that's really 90% of the job of the artist. Look at nature, take a walk. How does the light hit different colors? What happens? How do the shadows look? What shapes are the flowers? And the flower can be turning in all different directions. So. Again, it's very forgiving and it should bring you joy. You should always paint things that are joyful to you. Okay, I have two petals. <clears throat> These are just the basic colors, the, the beginning. Um, we're going to keep going. I'm trying not to go too fast for you. There's a curl here that's pretty dark. So, oh, let me show you another trick. This is called side loading. So my brush is clean right now. I cleaned it and I dried it. And I only want the edge to have paint on it. So I'm gonna bring it in. You can see it's laying on the palette and I'm just gonna sweep the left side of the brush into the red and do that a few times so it gets into the brush and you can see a little bit, there's paint there. You see there's just half load, it's called side loading. And then that's gonna help me to get in here without getting too messy inside. You can also use a really small brush, totally up to you. All right, so let's move on. We'll keep going around and we're gonna start in the back again here. Now this petal, it's behind and usually things that are farther away or behind another object are darker usually. This one has some beautiful sunlight coming through it. So we're gonna have a lot of yellows. And remember yellow is a bit of a difficult color because it is transparent. So I'm gonna start with orange and some yellow. And the really nice thing about this painting is that these colors sit next to each other on the color wheel. You see, I'm just sweeping them down. And so they all mix really nicely. You're not gonna get any big messy colors like brown or mud or gray. Um, and it, it's very soothing to look at. It's harmonious when colors sit close to each other. And I'm just sweeping. I have a little bit of red that I side loaded. I kind of like the way that looks. And just keep going, keep going, keep going. Big strokes. What I want to avoid is this. 
tap, 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 little tiny strokes. It's much better to get in the habit of doing these big grand sweeps. That helps us to control. And you can see I'm going back over wherever there was too much of a line and I don't want it to show. So here I am. And let's see, we're just gonna keep on going. This time I'm just gonna grab some orange. Make a nice bright sunlight coming in here. Maybe some yellow. And you don't have to follow my color suggestions. You can certainly take a look at it with your own artist's eyes and decide what you wanna do with it. So you can see how that yellow just sort of glows. I like that keep that there and try to put a little bit of yellow right here and it's okay to add paint over paint if it's totally dry or totally wet but not when it's starting to dry especially with watercolor that's how you get those big we call them blooms so i put a little yellow right there that's lovely I hope I'm not going too fast for you. If you're working on a canvas, it definitely takes more paint than on a paper. You can see that I have three totally distinctly different colors. This is more orange, this is more red, this is more yellow. I'm going to blend them all together and they're gonna get closer to each other. But I like to start out my first pass, my first application of paint, getting my really nice highlights in there at the clock, making sure we're doing okay, and we are. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna look first at that other. I see that I drew a little V here that's gonna be background, but it's not in picture. That's okay, I'm gonna go with that. Doesn't bother me at all. And I think we'll go with some orange. We'll start with orange. There are, uh, there's a lot of black in this painting. And just on a personal note, I don't use, grab some red, I don't use black paint very frequently. If you're one of my students, my art students, my kids, they know that. They know that about me. That doesn't mean I never use it. But if I am going to use it, I save it for the end. What I would rather do, if I think that something looks black or really dark on a painting, is mix colors to create a super, super deep, dark color. In this case, we are going to use black because when I looked at the poppies, they really do have pure black in them. The reason I don't use a lot of black now, I'm, I'm getting kind of messy and I have too much paint on my brush, so I wiped it off and then I'm going to clean my brush. A lot of this for me is just habit because I paint all the time. I have to remind myself to stop and let you know what I'm doing. Um, so black, the reason I don't use straight black in a lot of my paintings is because it tends to be very flat. But if you create a, a deep, dark color using blues and purples that looks greens, that looks black, it's going to be much more alive than flat black. All right, so in here, there is a little black of shadow, but I'm not going to get there yet. I'm going to add a little more red all the way in there. I'm going to climb around. And I know I need some black in there. I know that. But I also know that black can cover it with no problem. So I'm not worried about that. Yellow can't cover a color. So I would have to pay attention. I'm going to save this front area last. And I'm going to go back over here. There we go. There's a little bit of a delay on my video. Okay. And I, I like this color here. So I'm going to start with some oranges. This is a separate petal. Nice big stroke. Sorry, I know my hand was covering that. And these are soft edges, and that's a hard edge right there. Kind of reminds me of Sherbert. How lucky are we? The spring has been just beautiful. Seems like as soon as we hit the first day of spring this weekend, it just my garden went crazy, kind of knows. All of my flowers are blooming and it was just beautiful and warm today. I live out in the country. I'm working from my studio in Gilroy.
There we go. You see how I just flip this around like a corner and I'm going sideways, even though I said don't paint sideways? Guess what? Sometimes we break the rules, but I'm going to come back and sweep over that so that the texture is going in the right direction. There we go. It's nice to have these scalloped or irregular edges. It's more interesting. Like this here, it's more natural. In, in nature, we don't see a lot of really straight measured things. Now I can see some of my pencil lines, so I'm gonna try and cover those a little bit better, but I'll get back to it. Okay, let's do this one next. Let's see, and I want it to be lighter or, ooh, look at that, it's dark, that's unusual. I want it to be different, let's just say. So it does not match this exactly. So I'm gonna take some of that yellow. Just gonna put a little bit of yellow right here on this edge just to get it in there. And then orange, a little bit of red. And because I'm using paint that is it's, it's a good, it's a good quality paint. It's not the best quality paint. I'd say it's student. You have artist quality, which is the best and it's super expensive and it's worth it. If you are selling your artwork, if you're painting for pleasure, it's a waste of money. This is student grade. So that's the next grade and student grade is still a really good learning, um, good quality. And it has a lot of color in it, a lot of pigment. And then you can have your craft paint and that's really low quality. It has a lot of filler in it. And that's why you struggle mixing colors. They don't come out as, as well. Um, you don't have to buy a lot of paint. You really just need your, your three primaries, red, blue, yellow, and black and white. And you can make a whole rainbow of colors with that. We can make almost all of these colors, but it just takes a lot of work to measure and to um, mix. So it's easier to use them right out of the tube. Okay, so this is the little bit that's tricky. I'm just going nice and slow and careful with the edge of my brush to make a hard edge there and then sweeping it down. And I want this to be a little more orange. Remember I'm adding paint while it's still wet so that Yellow, I don't like, and I'm, I've got too much paint on my brush. It's just blending into one color. So that's a good time to clean and dry. And I'm gonna get the medium color, which is orange. And there we go. So it seems like in painting, we paint and we paint over, and we paint and we paint over a lot of things. And that's just part of the process. It's just the way it is. Okay, again, ruffly edge gives it a little more life. And then I'm going to come down to this forward pedal that is coming out at you. So you're seeing the top of it. There's a little bit of a cup right here. You can make that orange. I'm going to make it orange. Um, you can make it green, green, blue, but I'm just going to make it orange and fill it in and be done with it. That's like a cup, right? And then I want to get my oranges and my yellows again. I think these are my go-to colors, these two here, this, this sunflower yellow and the orange. Sweep. Now, this one's a little bit harder to sweep because it's coming out at you, right? So when you blend, it's okay to sweep the paint side to side, but when you blend it out, you want to do it in the growth, in the direction of the growth. Okay, if you do have questions, I think it's okay for you to type it into your comments. Now these two look almost identical, but I'm gonna change that as we go. This is kind of a flip and a flip, so I'm gonna go darker there. Either darker or lighter, just different. That's a little too red. So I add some orange. Be confident with your brush strokes. Press that brush down and just 
forgive yourself. Remember, it's only paint. If you really dislike something you did, let it dry and repaint it. It's not the end of the world. I think we're way too hard. You see that it was too bright, so I'm making it darker. We're way too hard on ourselves and we expect perfection, especially if you're new at something, if you haven't painted before, or if you're a, a basically a beginner, that's okay. Be forgiving. Have fun with it. I'm going to lighten the top up here so that edge looks like it's turning. Don't be afraid to try new things. Experiment. Experiment with color. You just might surprise yourself. Okay, so all of these sort of look the same, and I don't want that. I want there to be more, <clears throat> excuse me, of a sense of this coming out at me and flipping. <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm going to get my light, and I'm going to go over this so this is lighter. I like it better already. I'm just slightly blending, little touch, not real hard, and then I'm going to go dark over here. I've got both of the reds that I'm just grabbing. So you can see as I paint, my palette gets pretty messy, but I've still kept it manageable. I don't blend all over the plate. You know, that's something that uh, young artists struggle with. They like to just paint everywhere. Well, what you're doing is you're painting your plate and you're wasting all that paint. So don't do that. Keep it controlled. And I always try to keep my colors pure so I have something to work from and my mix is in the middle. If you just mix two colors together, you don't have any range or choices. Okay, so here I'm gonna go a lot darker so this looks more shadowy. I like it better already. This is our first pass. And we are 20 minutes left, and that's plenty of time. We're doing great on time. This here, a little bit of yellow just to lighten that up. It's just a ruffle. Like this is one petal and this is another petal. Okay, now look at that. It's completely dry. So I'm going to start back where I started the first time. And if you need to clean your brush, it's a good time to do that. And I want to make this petal lighter and this one darker. So I'm going to start with the one behind and make it a little tiny bit darker. Just a little bit, and no, I'm not adding black. You're gonna add that deep dark red. Hopefully you have a deep dark red. And we're just gonna put it, I don't wanna put it here because I like that glow. So I'm gonna put it down here. And just blend and again, soft, soft edges. That pretty little bit here. And I'm gonna blend in some of that gold so that I have a little more dimension. There we go. And you can see it's pretty reflective when it's wet, but as it dries, it's a matte, it's not shiny. And I'm pretty happy with this back petal. So I'm gonna call that one done. This one here, it still is a little bit see-through. But I'm not going to add any color to this one because I really like the glow. Instead, I'm going to add color here to the top of this one. So I'm going to take my red, my light red, and maybe a little orange. Just blending it in here. And I'm going to cover up. I have some little white spots that I don't want. So you see how I did it sideways, but now I'm going to blend it down. And that's a nice blend and it gave me a ruffled edge and it covered up all of those white paper pieces like right there that are showing through that I missed on the first go round. I don't want any white. And I'm gonna get nice and deep and dark. Now some reds go to pink and, and that's okay. You know, the poppy is orange, but like I said, it's your flower, you can use any color you want. But notice I have not added any white. I'm using yellow to lighten colors, not white. White will change your red completely. Alrighty, so I'm pretty happy with the back, these two. You always wanna ask yourself, what can I do to make it look nicer if there's something wrong that I don't like? Really question, what is it that I don't like? Is it the shape? 
Is it the color? And just always ask yourself how you can improve it. I want to work on this petal now because it's a little too flat and I don't want it quite that yellow. I'm going to add some color to it and sweep in here. A little bit of yellow. Remembering that yellow is a see-through color, so I have to bear that in mind. Now, I was just going crazy talking too much, and I stroked over my line and into the other petal. No big deal. Sometimes those happy accidents turn out to be your very, very favorite area. So just the point is don't stress about your artwork. Have fun with it. Why would you want to pursue something in your free time that doesn't bring you joy? Everything can bring you joy if you let it. But you have to forgive yourself and be gentle. Okay, so I added a lot more color. It was totally dry, so I could go in and blend my colors. Now it's totally wet. And take a little bit of that right here so I can show that that's a curl and it belongs to this petal. And guess what? Sometimes I use my fingers to blend. It's my favorite tool. I'm not worried about this white here because I'm going to add some black. I'm going to go around a little bit. Um, we're good. And just add a little more color on some of my pebbles. A little more color. What I want to do is make this look like it all belongs together. Like this one's still a little too light, but I want it to vary from all the different shades of yellows and oranges. I don't want it to look like it's um, just all the same, right? That's not how nature is. Lighten in that one. This one I think just needs a little more red and I think I'll do it right here where it curls. Oh yeah, look at that. That's nice. And I'm just blending it in so that, see there, happy accident. There was some red on my brush that I wasn't expecting, but I like the way it looks. I'm blending it so that these are soft edges. I like that this is a little bit of a glow right there. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with my petals. So I'm gonna clean my brush. And this is where I'm gonna move on to a completely different area. And if you need to come back and finish your petals later, you could. I'm gonna do my background. It's gonna be pretty quick. I'm gonna use a smaller brush. And I'm also gonna use a different brush just because if I didn't clean this brush properly and it still has red in it, it's gonna pollute my background. That's the only brush you have, just clean it real well and don't worry, be forgiving if it doesn't look exactly the way you like it. I have blue and white. I want this background to be just paint on the paper to cover up the white paper. I don't want it to tell any story. I don't want it to be um, a main actor. It's all about the flower. So I'm not worried about that. However, I do have a dark pencil line that I wanna cover. So I'm gonna bring this blue in just over my pencil. Of course, it has to be dry. You don't want to go in where the orange is totally wet. Just start in an area that's dry. And you can reshape the outside of your petal as well. There we go. You see how pretty that looks? Now, guess what? On the color wheel, I've got one right here. I'm not going to talk about color theory because that's a whole class. But if you look at orange, orange is here. The opposite of orange is blue. Blue is a cross from the color wheel. That means if you blend those two together, you're going to get mud. We don't want that. But if you put them next to each other, because they're complementary, they're going to bring out the best in each other. So blue is a perfect background color for an orange flower. That orange is going to be more orange because of the blue. And you can go darker blue. I just like this light sky blue because I don't want it to be, like I said, a main actor. There we go. Doing it real quick. Covering my pencil line. I can vary the blue. It doesn't have to be all the same color. It could be darker or lighter. 
This has a little bit of orange showing through because it was wet still. Not a disaster. Oh, now when you're getting into these little corners, I'm pretty good at using just the point of the brush, but you can just move to a tiny little brush if you need to. Having the right tool for a job makes a huge difference, really big difference. So here we go. This is a big blue corner. On my picture, it may not be on yours. Yeah. Fill that in. Fill this in. If you didn't get this um, ball, this little cup on your painting, don't worry. Don't, don't even draw it in there. It's not important. Here we are on the edge. Always make sure that each brush stroke counts. So I have a fully loaded brush. If you're painting and there's no paint on your brush, it's just frustrating. And then I noticed that with a lot of my young artists, they, they just keep painting, even though their brush is totally empty. There we go. I'm gonna leave my background blue. That's all I'm gonna do with it. In the picture, the original picture, there's a little bit of a yellow glow. You can do that, but you would have to let the blue dry first. So I'm not gonna go there. I just wanna keep it blue. Okay, so background is done. The reason I wanted to do my background really quickly and let it dry is if you painted your blue too strong and you need to fix any of your edges, you can do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to the black, the black and the center. So we're gonna use our dark brown for the center. That's raw umber, it looks black. And then on these two areas down here and then deep in the center is pure black. So I'm gonna start and get, it doesn't matter what brush you use at this point. And look, I still have a lot of paint remaining. I'm gonna take my dark brown. If you don't have a dark brown, just use black. And I'm gonna put this here. And I'm gonna go up with the edge of my brush just to kind of scallop that so it's not perfectly straight across. It's got some dimension. Those are the little, they're called pistols. I'm not a flower expert. Okay. And the reason I like this brown is because it's got some transparency and it, it just looks really nice. There we go. Then I'm gonna move into black. Black, black, black. Just be careful with your black. Don't get a lot. Black's gonna go on the inside. Nice and clean around those edges. And then you're just gonna blend them together. Okay. And that should be a soft edge. Remember when I talked about soft edges in the beginning? You shouldn't see a stripe of brown and then black. If it's all black, that's okay. Absolutely. Uh, I am gonna put the black that's in the center. I don't need to clean my brush if it has brown on it. That is okay. We have 10 minutes, so we're gonna get down to our final touches. Again, it's a good time to ask questions if you are having any issues with anything. So I like this flat brush. I'm gonna hold it perpendicular so that I have just the edge of it and I'm gonna drag and then press to make it thicker and then lift as I go, shoot. That's a lovely shape. If you can't do that, then use a little brush and do the best you can. I like the way this yellow is really glowing next to the black. Go in there and make that a little farther down. There we go. Okay, and a little more black. And again, perpendicular. I'm going to do the same thing again here. I'm going to hold it, drag it slowly, then press to make it thicker. And then lift and curve. And I get just a little point there. I think that'll do. Okay. That's all I'm going to do with the black. So I've got this brush with all the black on it. I'm going to clean that off. When you're cleaning your brushes, you do not want to leave brushes in the water. Couple reasons. Biggest reason for me is 
And I can tell you by experience, I do this, we used to do this all the time. When I start painting and I leave brushes in here, I'm going to whack that with my arm and I'm going to drop that water over my whole painting. I've done it a hundred times. So I clean them and I lay them down. The other reason is it'll ruin your brush if you leave it in that water. Doesn't matter if you spent 50 cents or $50 on a brush and I've spent up to $150 on a brush. You should always take care of your things and they'll last a very, very long time. Okay, the last part that I'm going to do are these little tiny um, hmm, pollen, I think. That's where the bees go. Ooh, it would be pretty to put a little honeybee on this, wouldn't it? Um, my husband keeps bees. We, we are, I'm not a beekeeper. I don't do any of the work. He's a beekeeper. And it's really pretty amazing. So um, on my color sheet, I said raw sienna, or I think I said raw sienna, which is a lovely brown. This color right here and you if you have that out great use that but I found that I was getting the same color if I just put orange because it mixes in with black so I'm just going to use my orange and my gold and in the center I'm going to make an oval right like that and then around it I want to have kind of like these sun rays but I want to vary them and you see how I did three strokes and then I'm going to Reload my brush. I'm spinning my brush. You're kind of coming out like a sunflower sunburst. And that's the center of your flower. So that's really important. And then we're going to use a little bit of that in the brown. A little bit of that in the brown. And just add some randomly around here. And I'm using just the tip of my brush. Go out there. I like to turn my brush often so it's a different shape. It doesn't look like a stamp. We are doing fantastic. Five minutes. Okay, cleaning my brush. And now I'm going to reevaluate. I'm going to look at it. I had this really jumbo brush and I didn't even touch it. I had it ready to go. I'm going to go back to a clean brush. And I'm just going to put a little bit of paint on the edges if I feel I need to. And I think we might be done. Now I've dropped a little bit of water. I can see it right there. If I brush that right now, well, let me do it for you. Watch what happens. It turns white. So if you drop something on there, leave it. Don't brush it unless you're prepared to correct that. Because that little white dot is going to stay there. Right? And the reason that happened is because I have my water on top. Remember I told you don't drag things across. And I only do that because on camera, I don't have room to put it over to the right and show it. But these are the kind of mistakes you make. So I'm going to call that a happy accident. And once it dries, I'm going to turn that into a little water droplet, like some dew. There's always a way to fix things. I'm going to take some of my brighter colors just at the very end. And I'm going to get the edges of my flowers here and there. If you have pencil lines that are showing, you can go over those. Let's see what happens if you add a little yellow. You get a little sunshine in there. I think I need a little yellow over here. Now, I just drug some black out. Again, I wasn't paying attention. I was painting too fast. I'm going to clean my brush. That is not a disaster at all because poppies often have some black that comes into them. So I'm just going to bring some of that red down. And there I drug some more black. You know, it was an accident. But I refuse to let accidents ruin things. Let them become part of your painting. There we go. Now, I know from experience that even though I didn't plan this little black blip over here, and black is my least favorite color to make a blip with, that's going to be my favorite part because it's going to show a really nice shadow there. It's all good. Works. Those little dots are troubling. Those I'll have to come back to after it dries. But for the most part, I think we have had a very successful Georgia O'Keeffe Red Poppy. 
I did give Marcy my email and I'm happy to answer any questions privately or if you have a particular concern or a materials question, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer any of those on my email anytime. I'm available for that. And if you do have any questions, this is a good time to type them in, ask Marcy, and she will relay them to me. Really remarkable. But we did that in an hour. Pretty great. The so far, we really don't have any questions, but we can, um, if you have any, this would be a good time to type them in. Fine. Now, look what happens when I pull that tape off carefully. You can wait till it's dry. Look at that beautiful white edge. It really gives it a finished, frameable look. That is just like a reveal, isn't that lovely? This is definitely frameable. If you worked on canvas, you don't have to frame. Isn't that marvelous? If you worked on paper, you can frame these really simply. Under glass, if it's in acrylic, under glass for sure. Okay, now, there we go. It's complete. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for taking the time out on your busy week. I know we're right in the middle of the week, but it's lovely to take a break and spend some time doing something that you enjoy. And I hope that you learned something new and you enjoyed and you, you found a little moment of meditation and you just enjoyed painting your poppy. Have a good evening. And again, I'm available if you need to contact me. Thank you so much. We do have a, a question that came in. Questions? Yes. Um, and one is, I have a square canvas and I sized the poppy to, um, to wish then, but mm -hmm. left a little bit of stuff, green stem area at the back of the poppy. Should I introduce oh. a touch of mm -hmm. green here? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you have green, and by the way, you don't need green paint. You already have it here. Green is just yellow and blue. Look at that. Beautiful green. So if you have some of the stem showing, you can just put it right here. Coming down from the cup. Sometimes they have little sections like that. Yeah. Green is a great color. Again, it's harmonious with the blue. Absolutely. Like I said, make it your own. It's a little more of a challenge to get it proportionately on a square, but it's very doable. That's why that, that plus sign really helps. Anything else? So someone just asked, when are we going to send the recording? And um, in a couple of days, we'll be sending it out to all the people who registered. And then if you need to Watch it again or have, share it with some of your friends. Um, go have another party. Absolutely. And then we get a, we have a few thank yous in here. And, um, Very well. Yeah. Let's see. Anything else that I'm missing? That was it. That's the comments That's that we it. have. I think people are just so busy um, finishing up their artwork. And right. Unfortunately, yeah. I don't think we can show everyone's, um, but I bet they're a, a really that would be one. nice. That would be wonderful. I'm just cleaning up my background here. So, and the wonderful thing about acrylic is if you are just tired right now and done or frustrated, whatever, even happy, leave it. Come back tomorrow when it's dry and take another look. And if you want to tweak things, you can just cover areas completely, even black, with paint. It's, it's quite forgiving, easy to work with. Another person says, wonderful painting. Thanks so much. Thank you. I appreciate the comments. We do have another Women's History Month program next Wednesday at 7. It's about women pilots. So come and hear about some famous women pilots and also what does it take to become a pilot and um, join us next Wednesday uh, sign up for the program and you'll get the link 
So Cheryl, thank you so much. And we look forward to future programs with you. Absolutely, my pleasure. I love to paint and I love to teach. So this was just really fun for me. And hopefully we'll be getting back to some in library programs shortly and um, look forward to see you then as well. Okay, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everyone. <laughs>